Hey guys, Tyler Risberg here with ESPN Esports, still in my quarantine apartment, but today I am joined by TSM's newest of Valorant player, Matthew Wardell U. Finally, you can announce that you are a part of the TSM roster, along with your mouse pads teammates, Hazed, Subrosa, Cutler, and Drone. How does it feel to finally get to announce that you're part of TSM? Oh, it feels really amazing. Feels like a long time coming. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to join a prestigious uh, org like TSM. And yeah. I'm looking forward to the future. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, as someone who's been following the Valorant beta scene and just the team signing players, T1, Gen G, Cloud9, Energy, Immortals, there's almost every single major organization in North America and in the West, really, is looking for a Valorant team. And you're, you guys, especially you five, that's now part of TSM, were one of the hottest commodities on the market. What was it about TSM that made them stand out against the rest of the teams that you were talking to? Uh, I, heard, we, I heard that um, they treat their players really well, and they're a really good um, organization to be a part of. And I... I want to be a part of TSM because I want to be the number one team, and and that's what they're all about, being number one. So, yeah. Uh, so, how are you on? Uh, like, other orgs, uh, they weren't, they weren't uh, like, I don't know how to say it. They weren't, um, they weren't as down for the cause. Like, mm. most orgs, if you don't perform well, they will like replace you instantly. I'm. I'm not. Sh I don't think TSM will do that. They'll work with you until like nothing. Like nothing. Like they'll work with you until you like progress into becoming better. So yeah. Another thing about this TSM roster is that all five of you individually teams are looking at. I mean, I heard a lot of teams were looking at you. A lot of teams were looking at Subrosa. Like you two were like hot commodities by yourselves. But I heard from many teams that you five were not going to play without each other. What was it about these five players, this group? Why do you? Why were you guys so steadfast on playing together under the same org? Well, we want to be a part of. Well, I wanted to play with this core because uh, we all have CS:GO experience, and some are like veterans, and some are new f people. But like. We have like the perfect combination of like support and a aggressive players. So then, like we perfectly fit, and like attitudes, personalities align. Nobody's like hard he hard headed, stubborn, or whatever like that. Everyone's willing to uh, work. But and a lot of people in the CS:GO scene, they're like really hard headed. They're stubborn, set in their ways type type of thing. Yeah. But everyone on this team, willing to grow, willing to learn. So that's why I wanted to stay with this core. Mm. And still a little bit about the Counter Strike scene. You were one of the, you know, perceived, you know, next men up, right? You were you were seen from, you know, Reddit, the community. When it came to North American tier two talent or, you know, burgeoning, you know, tier one talent, you were the guy. People were always saying, you know, if one of the T one teams like Team Liquid or Energy or EG have to make a change. They'll pick up Wardell. You were kind of next in line to be one of those next big players, like a Stewie 2K. Mm -hmm. Why did you leave Counter Strike? Why didn't you just wait to, you know, get picked up by one of those tier one organizations? Was it you just were sick of waiting? Were you just done with the game? Why did you leave Counter Strike? Well, I started streaming eight months ago, mm -hmm. and in the hopes of a pro team of uh, wanting to pick me up. Mm -hmm. So then I set off on that journey for eight months and streamed every day. For eight months and then built a big following but then no team would hit me up so then i kind of get tired of it but then i played with orgless and then we became a team and then we couldn't find any organizations so then then again i got tired again and then like at one point i just got sick and tired of just waiting and waiting for an org so then when valorant came out i was like this is our one opportunity i our opportunity to get an org and actually compete against like and like North America and all that and become the best. Mm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. 
I mean, you kind of were one of the first in a long line of people. It seems like every single day now. I mean, Callis, Freakazoid, Food, who's now on T1. It seems like yeah. every single day you see a twit longer of a CS uh, pro in <laughs> North America basically saying, yeah, so I really wanted to get an organization, but I couldn't find one, so I'm going to you know, peace out and go to Valorant. How do you feel? Do you think the T2 scene in Counter-Strike is over? Do you see a lot of these people, you know, maybe like a Freakazoid or someone else, you know, jumping back to Counter-Strike if Valorant doesn't work out? Why is the Tier 2 scene in NA so, you know, right now it's flimsy and it's kind of dying? It's it's flimsy because of the franchise league ESL mm -hmm. put in. So you can't, there's no path to pro anymore. You have to, yeah. like, buy in with, like, millions of dollars that nobody has except for the top tier orgs. So then I feel the tier two scene is going to like die off for now because the Valorant just came out and the Valorant's popping off. Everyone's trying to get signed. Everyone's trying to play for an org. So I think, but it might, CSGO might come back later on when Valve decides to do something or like ESL decides to do something because they notice that there's like no people trying to go pro. Like everyone, you know. Do you think any tier one players will switch, or do you think it's it, that's something far it's, off? Well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be good for them to switch because they're already in the top tier org and getting paid the big bucks. So I don't think any tier one player would switch. So going to Valorant, so you saw this as your opportunity. You know the new TSM mouse pass now TSM. You all the guys saw this as your one opportunity. What were your th first thoughts of playing Valorant when you first picked it up? Valorant. Uh, first thoughts, I actually really liked it. I actually liked doing all the ability stuff. The, well, the abilities just replace the smokes, the flashes, the HEs, combine more teamwork because some characters have uh, flashes, some characters don't. More, more, fla more teamwork and less individual play. And the f uh, I think some of the stuff are like still like bugged still, so like I don't have any complaints because it's a new game. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. So overall, it's a really good game. I like it a lot. So you've been playing, I mean, in the T1 Invitational, the most recent one, the Nerd Street Gamers one, you were playing a lot of Sage. You were operating, playing long range, kind of you know, flanking with the operator. Uh, would you say you are mostly playing Sage, or what other agents do you think uh, are in your repertoire currently? Well, I play, I used to play, I We switched off Sage because Sage is like a character that you should have in the post plants. Like, because uh, you need it, you need Sage to be close quarters because of the wall has uh, a range. The slow, you need to like uh, be able to like switch to your gun when you throw out the slow after. Uh, so I switched to like uh, Sova. Sova. Mm. I played Sova. I play Sova Jet. Uh, I can play Cipher. I can play Sage. I can play basically all the support yeah. characters. Do you think that? When we look at, you know, in the Valorant meta, you know, a month from now, two months, six months from now, do you think it's going to be a lot of mains like, oh, you, you know, Wardell's a Sova main, and DeFron's a Viper main, or do you think it's going to get to a point where every top level pro is going to have to at least play half or more of the agents, especially now that we're only going to have 12 at launch? Do you think most top players are going to have to be good at most of the agents? Well... The top players don't like if since they're on the team they don't have to play like all of them because yeah. their teammates will be like specialists at their yeah. at their character so they maybe maybe they'll like play two to three agents master them but yeah I don't think they'll master everyone but it's good to master all of them just to like know their abilities know what the enemy can do to you when you play on that champion or agent sorry. Yeah, Agent, Champion, Hero. There's so many different names for so many different characters in every single video game. Looking at the the meta currently, uh, you see a lot of Breach, you see a lot of Brimstone, Cypher, Sage. Do you think any characters currently need nerfs? I know we recently had the major patch of, you know, Sage got her slow orbs decreased, Cypher's cage now doesn't, you know, slow enemies when they walk inside it. Do you think right now most agents are balanced, or do you think there's one that needs to either be buffed or nerfed? I feel like it's it's pretty balanced right now. I'd say Sage got nerfed heavily, Cypher got nerfed heavily, so it's yeah, I'd say it's pretty balanced. It allow, allows for other agents to be used since they're not nerfed or like buffed. Like Viper got buffed. Omen got buffed, so he yep. can you know he you just don't have to mm -hmm. pick Brimstone all the time. Yep. 
also something that got nerfed in the most recent patch was Split. Now, Split has been famously known for its defensive heavy style. Uh, it got recently changed, uh, where most of the defensive barriers have been moved back. Some of the, you know, the corners of the map have been, you know, cut down, so teams just can't sit there and wait for teams to walk into them. How do you feel about Split now? Do you think it's, now that you've played on the new Split, how do you feel it is? I actually like it. It's like mm. more t more more uh t offensive sided. Mm. Gives the offensive a chance to actually like take map control instead of the CTs having it all the time or defensive having it all the time. Uh, overall, I feel like it's a good balance and makes it makes it easier for the T's. The the offensive, sorry. Yeah. No, it's again. The very even, uh -huh. the even the developers of this game are very mm -hmm. much like openly saying that this game is an homage to Counter Strike 1.6 and the yeah. whole days of Counter Strike. So yeah, CTT, it's it's very well known. Mm -hmm. Just looking at the future of these maps, we have three right now. We're gonna have a no one uh, Venice, I believe it's gonna be called, yeah. coming out for launch. How many maps do you would you? want in a perfect world in a esports ready world how many maps do you think should be in I'd the pool i'd say it'd be, it should be the same as counter-strike so like seven maps and then you'd rotate some in every like season or something you take one out put one in are you fine with every map having a gimmick because i think that is what you know riot wants that's kind of what they come out and says that every map's going to have a gimmick of some sort where you know bind is the teleport even is the three side oh. split is the mid you know the the the, the, the split mid are you okay with um, every map having a gimmick to it yeah that's fine it actually gives more like flavor to the map and like gives you another it gives you another like a new it's like a fresh start to a new map and it makes it less stale yeah, so it'd be it'd be really good. And really looking forward to the next maps. How does it feel going from Counter Strike, where I believe there's a, only a handful of developers working on the games? The game is doesn't really change very much. It's very static in how it plays. Not many updates, so you know what you're playing. Like you can go yeah. to about playing the game, pick it up, and you know what you're playing. Mm -hmm. Where in Valorant is going to be very similar to League of Legends, where every two weeks there's going to be a, a patch. Every month there's going to be a major patch change where an agent can go from being very useful to, you know, not useful at all, to mm -hmm. a map being very, you know, attack heavy to now being mm -hmm. defensive heavy. How do you feel about the changing in philosophy between Valve and now going to Valorant or Riot's dev team? I mean, even today, they're updating like every single yeah. day. So how does it feel to be on the other side of the, the shoot? Well, I used to play League of Legends and they used to like update a lot. So you just got to find what like the meta is. Hmm. and you just got to stick to it and then sometimes you find counters to the meta and then you like play around it so like i feel like i'm gonna be we're we're gonna be used to it because i'm used to like changes and all that and adapting is like the number one thing that uh pro players do so it's it shouldn't be a problem what position do you play in league of legends league of legends 80 carry yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Who was your main? Who was who was your I best player? Well, I played like in season three a long time ago. Uh, I was like Vayne, Graves, Tristana, makes sense. Ash, all those the Vayne, the Vayne, the mechanical yeah. artists herself. Yeah. So the current right now, it seems like Europe is getting slowly put together. There's a lot of amateur teams where NA it seems like everything is full speed ahead. I mean, almost every major org, like I said, is building a team. Gen G, T1, TSM, NRG, all these big orgs are putting their names or their names to these teams. Right now, looking at the players and teams in the beta, which teams and players have, have impressed you the most? Which players? Well, the French Canadians impressed yeah. me a lot. The Gen G, sorry, yeah. Gen G. The French Canadians, yeah. same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've been playing a lot. So then those guys impressed me a lot. Um, who else has impressed me? Um, I, like Clockwork, this guy named Clockwork, he's an Overwatch manager. The Overwatch player, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> he like, I thought he was a cheater. He dropped like three oh, really? kills. I'm like, yo, this guy's cheating. There's no way he's legit. Yeah, so that guy has impressed me. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty much. Yeah, pretty much it. Nobody like I have to like go crazy for them in order 
for me to be like, wow, this guy's insane. So people should be having keeping their eye on clockwork. <laughs> yeah, I'd say like, yeah. That's actually a very interesting thing where it's, I think a lot of people coming into the Valorant beta were kind of making fun of the Overwatch pros of being like, oh, they're coming from this, you know, Blizzard game. It's all, you know, <laughs> ability based. But it seems like, you mean, Sinatra, Corey, now you're talking about Clocker. It seems like a lot of the Overwatch pros are actually doing quite well in the upper yeah. echelon of the North American solo or the, the ring system. Yeah, but um, it will always be harder for them because they don't have years of experience that CSGO players have. So, like, their, their game sense won't, like, develop um, as quickly. Who would you say, if they switched over to Valorant, would be the biggest monster from Counter-Strike? Who do you think, if they just said tomorrow, eh, I'm going to go play Valorant for a living, who would who would scare you the most to be like, okay, this guy, this this is going to be very difficult to play. Like, like, those liquid, all five of those liquid guys? Yeah. Or the Gen G guys. I mean, um, evil geniuses. That either either or those guys are insane. So you think in a world where like Team Liquid was just like we're gonna play Valorant <laughs> and strike? Do you think they just be instantly the best team in Valorant, even if they had uh, half the practice? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say they'd be they'd be top five, top three for sure. What's one thing that you want in Valorant coming up in the in the launch? Because it's coming soon in oh, the coming yeah. months, one month, two months. The official summer launch is coming. What's one thing you'd want to change from the game that it's currently standing? Like, what's one thing you want to put in the game? I want like, change? I have like a couple things actually. Oh, yeah. I want like the left-handed to be put in hmm. because I usually play on left hand and like I can't play on right hand. Uh, I have the what was it? Quick scopes. I want like quick scopes to be a part of. Uh, Valorant because it's just it's just easier to like snipe and usually most of the maps are close quarters anyways and uh, no scopes should be like like accurate at least because of the, the close quarters there's not much like the ner- the op isn't as strong as it is in Counter Strike so just those things like no scopes and quick scopes pretty much it nothing else I would change maybe the picker's advantage too the picker's advantage is really bad. What would you give a tip to if you, let's say you're talking to someone who's just, this might be their first FPS game. They're not familiar with Counter-Strike. They're coming into Valorant. They're, you know, they're a big League of Legends fan. They want to play this game. What tips would you give them when they want to climb to rank? You know, they're in iron, they're in bronze, they're, you know, they're having trouble climbing. What tips would you give to a newcomer to the, you know, the Counter-Strike style shooter game? That is tips? Um, I'd say communicate, like say what you're doing. Um, what you're gonna do communication is good if like your aim is lacking like becoming more of a support player uh, or like running in or like entering a site or whatever just not like being not non uh, proactive you got to be more proactive more in the game I feel like really new people just sit back and watch people play and it's not very um, productive at all so just like that it's not it's not that hard to be like uh, a decent at this game two final questions for the newcomers that are going to be watching this tsm team you know the tsm fans who love the league of legends team they love the fortnite team what should they expect from the tsm valorant team what kind of style were you guys going to bring to the maps of valorant what kind of style i feel like we're gonna we're gonna de- have definitely have multiple styles aggressive passive and like um, explosive, I'd say. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Multi multifaceted. You're not just gonna be yeah. you're not gonna be one dimensional yeah, for sure. Yeah. And finally, to those TSM fans who you're expecting, you know, defensive, offensive, explosive type of play. What do you want to say to all the new TSM fans that will be checking you out very soon in your streams? I want to say um, uh, thanks to you for supporting me in the future. <laughs> Um, yeah, I look forward to meeting every single one of you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Wardell, and good luck on TSM. And if you want you. more news and action from ESPN Esports, keep it locked here on our YouTube channel and ESPN.com slash esports.